Is it this guy? I think it's this guy. <laughs> First of all, fuck you. Fuck you. That is disgusting. That's actually fucking disgusting. Hello. I'm here to talk about monetization. It's Let's Go Whaling. It is about a, uh, a summary of a huge bunch of uh, behavioral psychology. So the, the tricks on, on how to monetize a game well. Some of you will probably uh, be slightly shocked by w all the tricks I have listed here, but I'll leave the morality of it out of the talk. We can discuss it. Uh Not predatory, by the way. Uh, if we have time later. <laughs> so, let's dive right in. Uh, first off, Wall Street Trader and an oil shake got into a fight. Who won? You guys did. This is to remind you that a lot of the spend comes from, from the high-paying high guys, the whales. Um, and the very best way to get... It's important, as gross as this is, it's important to understand what the thinking is behind these games like if you i think i think it's it's so important that you understand how badly they're trying to fuck you like just how nasty and dark and manipulative uh, the whole system is these guys to spend is to get two rich competitive guys to fight each other and tell them i'll give you a slight upside if you pay me next off to remind you that the best way to make sure of both your retention and your monetization is to make sure you have enough of an in-game economy in there. Yeah, uh, have enough the shit to buy. The up there is actually clearly lowballing it. Top We're lowballing it! A thousand dollars! Lowballing it, clearly! Like, if you thought a thousand dollars, only a thousand dollars per person, right? Global games it. have in-game economies worth tens of thousands. That's how you can uh, keep people in there. They have lots of things to do, to, to stuff to upgrade, to progress along, and that's how you can can make them them spend a lot as well. Since you can, for instance, uh, give a huge uh, discount on something. You know, uh, this stuff is worth 150 uh, euros, but now I'll give it to you for five. If your whole in game because it's is worthless, than 150, you cannot do that, of course. <laughs> so, no. Dudes, you can't if you don't, if you don't like rate, put the target price nearly a thousand percent higher. How can you make deep discounts? Stupid. It's <laughs> a few ah! of these, um, oh! like frameworks on how, how to think of stuff. I've seen suggestions to model what you sell according to Bartle types. I assume you're all familiar with Bartle types. Uh, the achievers want to progress in the game. The socializers want to speak to other people. The killers just want to uh, compete and kill each other. And the explorers are the guys who are after stories and, and uh, experiences. So uh, this is from Will Luton's uh, suggestion to you sell Convenience to the achievers, which really means faster progress. Mm -hmm. Customization to socializers, uh, hats and stuff. Uh, competitive advantage, that is pay to win for the killers. And content for explorers. Now, the reason I highlighted convenience over up there or, or progress is that most of your sales will be here. Uh, customization, hats and stuff, they're nice, but you, you'll have a single digit percentage of your income coming from that, if you do both that and progress. Uh, competitive advantage is good, but you can go overboard with it and have an unbalanced game. Uh, which Imagine. is, if it's too clearly pay to win, people will stop playing. <laughs> and <laughs> you wish! Yo! How little you do! How little you do! When was this? What year is this? Oh, where's the date? I can't see the fucking date. How little you do this is a few years ago. Oh, that would be really sad. Then Just give it a few years, it Toral. Takes a lot of resources and give time it a few to do years. that. Uh, selling content is very expensive. Hardly any team can keep up producing content in in the. Uh, yeah, the content's needed. the worst, man. Fucking, I I'm with you, Toral. Ah.
Content is the worst. What we want to do is earn money for doing very little. That's where it is. What we don't want to do is make content. Fuck that. This one I like a bit, bit better. Uh, Hook Habit Hobby. This is a, a uh, model from uh, Dimitri Dravano of Flare Games. Uh, it's Good a morning. model for how people Thank you, progress Preach in a game. Gang the for hook is what gets you into the game smile. to try out a, a free-to-play game. Then you build it into a habit that you play multiple sessions yeah, that's every right. day. That's right. Manipulate and them. Then that's at the it. end, it's the yeah. hobby phase where, where people uh, yeah. see it as their, one of their main hobbies and they Real put, put bit, lots boys. of time and resources into it. Got now, if we look at this from a monetization perspective, the hook is where you put up an icebreaker. You want to give a really, really good deal, something that's... Uh, a like, if you complete your first dungeon, you get a heavily discounted reward. Just 99 cents! Come on, what's 99 no cents? No-brainer, you would be crazy to turn it down. 850% increased value! Oh, there it is! Shocker! As a player. The reason to give a really good deal up front is by making people spend up front, they are also emotionally committing to your game. That's Their retention right. will go up. And the first They've already paid money. is uh, it breaks the ice. Then they think of themselves as spenders in the game. It's okay for me to spend in the game. Uh, lots of people are otherwise have this... You throwing up here or what? ...wall up. I will never Not predatory, by the way. Game. So you need to break the, the wall first. Yeah, you got to get them paid. The habit is... The main meat of the game, this is where you sell the faster progress, as we just discussed. And the hobby is for the guys who have already maxed out. They're the guys who have uh, all of their Clash of Clans building at the max level. They, they are already there. So you can no longer sell progress to them, you have to sell consumables. This You've milked them for every... Well, the problem is, <laughs> when you've milked them for everything for what they want, you need to try and find a way to sell them shit they don't really want. It's where you, you're the selling important bit. Uh, the faster healing times or, or faster build times of armies. Yeah, uh, yeah, this yeah, is yeah, also yeah. where you get ba nice. basically unlimited upper spend. There's yeah, no that's the shit. ...limit to how much you can spend in, for instance, Clash of Clans. Fuck yeah, dude. So let's go down into some of, of these tr more tricks. Gotcha! Uh, gotchas. Who hasn't heard of gotchas? Excellent. Uh, most of you have. So gotchas, uh, they're named after gachapon, these Japanese machines, which are sort of slot machines that give you collectible stuff. On random, you get collectible stuff. But it's really the same mechanic that we have had in, in Western markets for, for collectible playing cards like uh, Magic the Gathering for ages. You Pokemon cannot, cards. no matter how much you spend, you cannot directly get the card you want. You have to, over and over again, pay to get uh, a bunch of random cards and hope that the thing you, you wanted is in there. Or then you like trade them somehow uh, if there's what wasn't what you hoped for. Um, these are great for, for, again, both monetization and retention because people like uh, the, uh, the lottery part of it. Uh, if you want, look, it, look up Skinner Box to know why. Uh, it's really a lot more exciting and you give, get more content because people cannot immediately progress to the stuff they want. They have to keep trying a few times. So it really takes like five times as long to get the collection that they need compared to just progressing and collecting soft currency and buying it straight off. That was fun. Okay, then think about uh, how you want to get, get, to, uh, get to your millions. Do you go the king route of having a huge volume of players and a fairly modest lifetime value for each spender? Or do you go uh, the machine zone route of having a very hardcore game that uh, like 95% of the population is going to look like, what is that? But the 5% that actually do play it, they will spend a lot. Just know where you stand on this. Hot State, there's an excellent uh, book about um, Behavioral psychology called uh, thinking fast and slow. Uh, I hate that the content was dismissed so thinking. readily. I'm telling you that the fast <laughs> thinking mode is what you want. The slow thinking is, is your analytical brain. Uh, what's 12 times 47? I'm sure all of you can answer that, but you have to start your actual thinking brain. Oh, do I don't want to do that. Uh, now, if I say complete the sentence, bread and water, everyone's got butter. Maybe I built different. I don't like butter. Have I built different? 
Am I coming from a different... Because I'm poor? I bread and water, right? I win. So that's the fast thinking. Our brain works in these two modes, and starting the analytical part of your brain is too much to ask for a spend. How it applies to games is make stuff immediately useful, immediate gratification. Yeah. If you have a, a level-based game and you sell some don't, boosters up front, don't let them for think. instance, a coin don't doubler do or, or uh, some other stuff that will help you, People will have to analyze and think it through. These things are good for me. These will help me progress before they do it. And they won't do that. If, on the other hand, you do like, for instance, in this uh, temple run, once your game is over, save me. I have a few seconds to spend hard currency and, and I get to continue. Or similar in Candy Crush Saga, at the very moment that I've lost, uh, I can see I just played a bit more. I can pass it. Make it immediately useful. Why is he smacking Lost his lips version. so much? This is, uh, people are much more attached to the stuff they have than an equal amount of things that they can gain. Uh -huh. Which means that um, if I give uh -huh. you an, an offer, um, I'll flip a coin. If it's tails, I'll take 100 euros from you. If it's uh, heads, I'll give you 120 euros. Who would take the, uh, take the bet? I would shoot you. No one. No. Oh. We want, we need more gain to offset the loss is felt more strongly. Uh, we need like 200 against 100 loss. 200 gain against 100 loss, then we'll take the deal. Uh, no, I would games, never do anything you with you. can apply this by giving <laughs> people not. stuff that feels is in their pocket and then threaten to take it away unless uh, they pay up. This is, lots of level-based games do this. Uh, there are collectibles in, in things like Puzzle and Dragons. You collect along the way. If you didn't finish the, the level, they'll take it from you. Oh, now, no, take don't continue. take it away. Office and scarcity uh, plays into the loss aversion. If there are um, rare cards up here... It's very evil. Yeah, see, it is. I mean, this is not just gaming. TikTok. Like, that's the thing, right? This is not just gaming. This is how they try and get you every single place, right? It's, uh, it's, it's going to the takeaway or the fucking McDonald's and they're like, well, you know, for an extra pound, you can buy some more fucking cheesy nuggets or whatever to go with it. They sound nice, don't they? Uh, like, but you have to decide there and then at the till. You gotta do it. You gotta I'll do it. You do it. You. Oh, you missed you. out on it. Uh, they, Unlucky. They are scarce. They go away. This is a brilliant way to, to uh, get more people to, to spend more. Subscription. Does anyone recognize the guy? No. He's the builder from uh, uh, Clash of Clans. The point Never played of this it. is the builder ha has a very specific way of working. If you spend your hard currency on this guy, you will only get the benefit from him if you then keep coming back to the game very often. Retainers. So, Fucking Squeenix got me with retainers. Bastards. It drives both retention and uh, monetization. Build stuff that, that uh, makes people come back to your game a lot in order to get the value out of that. Fucking Squeenix. The IKEA effect. Oh, what's this? Uh, this is to say stuff that we put work into, we value more highly. Uh, you know, IKEA really sells you cardboard stuff. It's shit, but you value it still somehow slightly higher because you actually built it yourself. Uh, the model over here is from uh, a uh, psychology book called Hooked: How to Build uh, uh, Hooking Products. Uh, this is how we build build habits. Uh, there's a trigger to remind us to do something, what then we go do an action, <laughs> we get the variable reward, just like the gachas, we, we get... Uh... Isn't it? I can't remember which, I think it's Ubisoft. I could be wrong, but hasn't Ubisoft painted uh, an algorithm that detects where you are on that hurtle, herbal scale, or whatever the fuck it is, and then they matchmake you with people who have uh, store-bought things that should entice you. So if you're somebody who's into cosmetics, it will match make you with people with fancier cosmetics. Yeah, the battle thing. 
It's Activision? Yeah, well, sh shocker. Uh, the lottery ticket, and then to really hook it down, we need to ask people to do something for us, do a little bit of work, because then they become emotionally attached to that. It's Fox either way. Yeah, it's a technology, so it, it, detect it tries to detect what kind of player you are. Uh, so if you're somebody who's a killer, it tries to matchmake you with people who have store-bought things that make you get a higher KD ratio, right? Even if that weapon is dog. <laughs> but it, yeah, it generally gets a lot of killing blows. So it's like uh, it'll match make you with like a lot of ninjas and crystalline and shit like that. But if you're into cosmetics, it'll pair you up with people with a lot of cosmetics, a lot of store bought cosmetics, so that you see them visually. It's like you see that cool hat, you see those cool weapon skins, you see them cool um, character skins or whatever it is, and vice versa. It, it like it tries to detect what kind of player you are and it pairs you up with them so you'd be more tempted and so you're, you're basically you're shopping while playing and then we set up the the next trigger either internal or external external trigger mean, means uh really it's evil but if you should know about it this is educational right we don't accept it just be aware that that's happening to you because we still want to play video games right ultimately that's the point just be aware of what's being done to you that you are being manipulated and when you, if you suddenly shockingly find that like, oh, I browsed something on the store and now I'm paired up with people who have that fucking weapon skin. So I, I could be sat here with you guys, right? Let's, and I always, with those microtransactions, we always browse the store and I click on it. If we suddenly see that, uh, yeah, we're, we're seeing that thing everywhere. That's intentional, right? They're trying to get you to fuck, they're manipulating yeah, your brain. Identification in, in our case, internal to that people have in their minds that, you know, I started building uh, uh, that tower or I planted. Yeah, Google does it as well. Yeah. Like in the EU, at least, we have to be asked if you want that. If you want tailored ads. Uh, what's the one that Windows says? I, I installed Windows on a PC, yes, not yesterday, the day before. And it says, do you want to, they have to announce it. Like, do you want tailored ads? And then it says, you're still going to get the same amount of ads. They just won't be targeted at you. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's the trigger. And then we go, go round and round. And, and I still believe we're in the EU. Hold anchoring me. is fun. Anchoring Ooh, means anchoring's that fun. When we don't know the price of stuff, the first price we hear suggested for it becomes our anchor. And then we compare everything to that. Uh, for instance, ah. an iconic example, black pearls. Black pearls, when they first came on the market, no one wanted them because they're dull and black and don't look very nice. Uh, mean. They were, the guy who had them uh, told his, his um, summer trainee or whatnot to, to just dump the price of them and get rid of them. Uh, the summer trainee understood it wrong and actually hiked the price by 50. Uh, Fuck 50 you with the fucking percent. <laughs> And then suddenly they beca became uh, these objects of desire. Uh, even more um, special, I think, is this. If I ask all of you to write down the last two digits of your social security number, and then I have an auction, like uh, imagine this is a fancy bottle of wine, and you get to bid on auction here. The people like me, my last two digits in my social security number are 99. I'd bid a higher price on this than the guys who, who have uh, like 10 or 0, 05. Just because I wrote down a high number on a paper will anchor my, my thinking on, on what goes next. So how to use this in a game? Some games immediately uh, when you're in, in the tutorial, they suggest to you, you should buy this good IAP for 50 euros or, or something like that. I, I go like, oh, that's expensive. I'll never do that. Of course, yeah. no and I expect them to say no. Then again, I come back, back like uh, a few se sessions later and suggest they buy it for, for 15. And I will say, that's a good value because my anchor was at 50. <laughs> Fucking rat bastard. <laughs> you absolute con. <laughs> you absolute, for this worthless shit, it's worth nothing. It's worth absolutely nothing. You absolute piece of shit. Oh my God. Ah, oh, that's painful. So tell them it's worth 100, and then later on we can say it's 15. <laughs> it works! It works! Social proof. Uh, so this is, we are herd animals, we tend to do what all, all of the others do. Uh, you all sit quiet listening to me, because that's what all, all of the other guys do, do here. So, uh, especially when people are similar to, our, to us, this means that uh, you should have uh, 
the socially accepted I guarantee whatever this guy's about to say, not predatory. The way of behaving in your game should be paying. You want to tell people, for instance, their, when a clan member of theirs spend IAP money, you want the whole clan to know, because then that becomes the socially acceptable way of behaving. Uh Such as buying a tea emote and then everybody spamming it and me being annoyed with it, so more people go to the store and buy a tea emote. And then they stand in front of me all drinking tea constantly. You know, that would be the kind of thing. Because it's now become socially acceptable to go to the Squeenix store to buy the fucking tea emote so you can stand and annoy me with the tea emote. Uh, you buy... absolutely do not want to tell them that the majority of people in your game never spend money. That's poison. Never tell them that. <laughs> Fuck me, never tell him that. Jesus Christ, don't say that. <laughs> means that the stuff we hear a lot about is the stuff we judge as uh, likely to happen. This, for instance, can tie into gotchas. Uh, if there are rare gotchas, not every player will see them every session. That's like the definition of rare. Which means that they will think that it's not likely to happen that they get one of those, which means that you should tell them about it, which means every time a clan member gets one of the rare things, you should broadcast it to, to all of the others, like your friend got this l rare or legendary thing. <laughs> then they will judge it more, more uh, likely. The right amount of choice, this is a, a famous a jam experiment. Uh, they put up a stall in a supermarket with 20 different jams. Uh, you know, the ta have a taste here, then, then you, you have a, a discount, go buy some. And then they had a control group who had only five jams to taste. Now, for the one with 20, a lot of people stopped by and tasted the jams. But for the one with six, a lot more people bought because they, they know that that's the best one. That's the one I want. Yeah, it's, uh, the, the announcement is the achievements and stuff like that. Like you'll see it in a lot, you see it a lot in a lot of games is blah, 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 completed the thing. If there are 20, thing. there's too much choice. We just get, get anxious. We choose nothing. There's a bunch of data on uh, this that whales take longer time, time to convert. This is just another reminder for you to have content for a Minnows, dolphins, and whales. The core loop goes through, through the store. Uh, have an example, hill climb raising, because it's so fantastically minimal and nice. You do your action, your, your in-game, uh, your core game there. And I'm plugged to, to the meta game <laughs> where you, you do the upgrades, and then back there. So the loop always goes through the meta stage where, where your store, where, where you're, you're spending money. I'm fucking plankton, baby. Technique. I haven't seen this actually done in a game, but it's uh, interesting, it should work. If we tell people they are a certain way, if we compliment them on, on being nice, good citizens, they are more likely to behave as nice, good citizens. So you should actually tell your players that they good are uh, good boy. Ba -ba generous individuals who, who have a, a taste for good art and, and uh, want to support their, um, their game developers by paying you and buying IAPs. Related to that, also, to te telling people the reason to do something makes them much more uh, likely to actually fo follow through. You used a meme? Really? You used a meme? Why should we spend the money on this? Because power. It's important. I know, it, I know it's disgusting. I'm fully aware of how disgusting this is, but it's important. This is what's happening everywhere, dude. It's happening to you all the time in these and, games. And man. do that. Spend because reasons the reasons don't, don't don't even have to be that good in order for this to work <laughs> you don't even need a good reason <laughs> <What>? <laughs> don't be under the impression your reason needs to be good there just needs to be a reason and last here are four games of progression four ways to progress skill luck grind and pay Make sure players understand that grind and pay are options that's right that's what that MMO champion guy said they're just letting you know it's available there if you want it. Uh, remember, there are four ways of progressing in, in games in general. You can have a skill game based game, you can have a luck based game, you can have a game where you just progress by grinding or you can pay to, uh, to progress. Make sure that your games aren't too skill based. I made that mistake myself.
too skill-based game, you don't get people to pay, for, pay you because there's no reason to. I mean, to analyze how atrocious that comment is, if you make it so that play, good players can beat your game, then there's less reason for them to pay for it. So that's the last thing we want. So make sure grinding and paying are legitimate versions of progressing in the game. Thank you, that's it. A few questions. Yeah, we're clapping? Okay. Any questions at all? Nope. <laughs> uh, how do you feel? Feel good? Uh, you're really good? You're really good? Not predatory! There's nothing predatory in it at all. It's not like the entire system is based to manipulate you endlessly. Why would they not clap? They don't give a fuck? Well, I mean, what was the revenue of... Uh, was it... Is Clash of Clans still the number one? Or was it Candy Crush? Annual revenue... Of Candy Crush. <laughs> 2017, Candy Crush made $695 million. In 2018, $930 million. And then 2019 and 2020, year on year, this is how much money people are spending on Candy Crush. Genshin's way more. It's uh, is it... Is this all Rich Campbell, though? Uh, Genshin Impact hits $874 million spent since its launch. One revenue generating country for the title, the Genshin Impact picked up approximately $253 million from the local app store to date, accounting for 29% of global player spending. Outside of China, the game has picked up just over $620 million, accounting for 71% of all revenue. So this is why people are kind of normalized to this shit, man. Genshin Impact raises, uh, races past $1 billion on mobile in less. The mobile version of Genshin from Mio has surpassed $1 billion in player spending in less than six months. Following its official launch in September 28, 2020. Sensor Tower Store Intelligence Estimates show. The title has been a global blockbuster since its release, having generated $874 million in just its first five months from the App Store and Google Play. Uh, player spending has remained at an average of approximately $160 million per month since December. And so far in March, the title has accumulated more than $148 million. This puts the game on track for its best month since October when it picked up $233.7 million on mobile alone. So it's really no surprise. It's really no surprise. Pokemon Go was up there as well. Oh, months to first 1 billion in total player spending. What was it you could even buy in Pokemon? Wasn't it food or something? Balls and laws. Yeah. That was a weird period of time with Pokemon Go. A fun period of time. Like, the world kind of came together with Pokemon Go. <laughs> so, I mean, it works. That's, that's, that's why it's here. It, 